What's up everyone, Steven here from Tech Maker Studio. In this quick tutorial, I wanna show you a cool new trick I learned with Tailwind CSS. I've been hearing about Tailwind for quite a long time. If you follow this channel, you know I've always used Bootstrap. Um, I was hesitant just because it takes me a while to actually pick up new things sometimes and it's quite a different paradigm. But now that I've switched, it is super nice. So. Anyway, that being said, um, a couple of quick things up front. So this is a React app. You can use this, you know, in anything that you want. It doesn't have to be React, but just note that like the reason I'm saying class name as opposed to class is because I'm in React, so on and so forth. Just kind of like uh, stick with whatever you're doing. If, if you're using regular HTML, you'll just use class. Also, Tailwind on their website will have setup instructions if you're not using React for whatever thing that you're using. So if you've ever worked on a web design, you've probably run into this situation before where you have some kind of background image and you want to put some text or buttons or whatever kind of content on top of it. And you actually want to put like a background gradient or some kind of opacity, like see-through thing on top of the image, maybe to mute the image or to make it a little bit darker so that the text would pop. Like for example, this white text is pretty hard to read here. Well, you've been able to do this sort of thing for a while using some different CSS tricks. Um, I don't remember exactly what I used to do, but I think it was actually from CSSTricks.com. Uh, kind of nested divs, and one of them's absolutely positioned, and so on and so forth. And honestly, I don't know what's going on exactly behind the scenes with this in Tailwind. I just know that it's quite easy, and it has some interesting side effects uh, so I'm going to show you how we did this on our new website, which we're rolling out soon, um, techmaker.studio. If you want to check it out over there in a few days, it'll be out probably. Um, but anyway, so let's take a look at this. So the first thing I want to do is just take this background image away, which you can see we're using this cool uh, URL style in the square brackets, which I really like. But for now, let's just go over here and make this a black background. Okay, so... What I wanna do is add the actual image. So let's say image source equals, and I'm pulling this from Pexels, which is a nice place to grab some free stock photos. Um, they're Creative Commons. So I've got this cool um, palm tree thing here. So I'm just gonna save that, and now we'll see we've got some palm trees coming in. Okay, so let's also change this to be text black for now, just so that we can see if it's still here. Okay, cool. So now you can see this is being pushed down below our image. So we have this utility class P24, which is adding a padding. And I don't want that to apply to the image. So what I'm going to do is say div class name equals P-24 like that, and then I'm gonna move these two uh, content tags, oh, not what I wanted to do, up in there, save that. Now that bumps that in, but I need to remove it from here. Okay, so now we have an image taking up the entire screen, and so on. So what I want to do is start by editing this image tag with some classes one by one so we can see kind of what Tailwind is up to. So we can add a class name or class depending on what you're doing. And I wanna start with something where we can say um, W full H full. So basically this is saying make the width of the image and the height of the image, the full width of the containing element. So when we save this, we're gonna get this really squished up, ugly image. Now this is actually the thing I was worried about whenever we were looking at, um, whenever we were looking at uh, doing this, I was thinking, okay, how are we gonna have this image that's not actually a background image? Because in my mind, the image is gonna get stretched one way or the other. Well, Tailwind has this really cool class which you can say object cover. And so now if we have this here, we can stretch it around and it works basically like a background image. So that's kind of cool. The other thing we wanna do is we wanna remove this from the sort of object flow of the page. So we can say absolute here 
and that doesn't work. Uh, what we want to do now is add relative above. And so now we get our image contained absolutely within our top level thing. Now one thing you may have noticed is that our text disappeared and we'll get to that in just a second. First, I want to play around with a couple of things. So A, um, if we switch to, this is kind of a, a two part in one thing here, but if we switch to uh, BG gradient, and then we can give it some directions here. So we'll say to top right, we can do to right, to left, whatever. I'm gonna do to top right. And then we'll do from, and then we can pick any color. We could do from purple 400, and you can look these up on their website, obviously, to green 700. And then I'm gonna get rid of this uh, BG stuff here. Okay, and then we may also, that may be enough. Let's see, if we save that, we shouldn't see anything different, okay? But now if we come down here and we say mix blend overlay, we're gonna get this super bizarre effect. And we can play around with this, make this like 600 so it's darker. Let's come down here and make our text white again like this. Um, so that's kind of nice. Like you can do some really bizarre stuff. If you really want this to be dark, you could do 900. And you know, you could change the direction to top left, you know, play around with it however you like. So this is a pretty cool thing. So another thing that I, I noticed when we were working on our website is if we change this to be like text slate 100, Check out what happens. So, well, let's change it to be like 400. So it's really kind of a gray. So you can kind of see that it sort of vanishes there. Um, because it's blending all of this stuff together. And again, like I don't fully understand how this works, but I'm going to show you something. Let me pop this in at the bottom because we have plenty of space with this. Okay, so you see this mix blend over or mix blend mode. So we can actually cycle through and see it doing all sorts of quirky stuff. So I guess you don't really have to change that color from white. Um, so it's not playing super nice with this background image, actually. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So this is kind of maybe the best example of it just doing something kind of freaky. But let's come over here. Um, let's get this abstract kind of playing around here a little bit. We picked an image sort of like this on our website. And let's see what this does. If I paste this in and save that. So now you get this like really bizarre kind of behavior. I kind of like that, that's weird. Okay, so why is this happening? Um, and we can, we can even make these like text I'm gonna play around with this a little bit more, but you kind of probably get the point. Um, so you can kind of experiment on your own here, but uh, we have, okay, so like that's kind of crazy looking. This is actually really cool. All right, so I, basically what's going on here is the text is underneath the image and we're doing a blend of the background and the image. So that's what's actually happening. And we can do this like, um, if you come in here to like the headline and we just add a position of relative, it'll pop it up above and you can see the little quirky pattern goes away. Um, the other, I kind of messed that up. What am I doing here? I want to undo and save. So now we get this weird, weird little pattern. The thing that you can't do is if you start trying to drag over the text to highlight it, you'll actually be dragging the image. So that's kind of a weird user experience. So what we've done on our website is we were playing around and I figured out like, I really actually like, you know, the effect that gets created here. And so, but we have a button, you know, under where you click and you go to another page. 
So we had to set the button to have this relative attribute and then it works fine. You just can't highlight the text. But anyway, I thought I would kind of talk through this. This is a really, really cool, quirky thing that I, it's new to me. Um, hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and drop any questions down in the comments and uh, I'll try to answer the best I can. I'll talk to you soon.